Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on Pascal's Triangle. And I don't think it's an easy problem. I mean, maybe if you do like the most brute force solution it is, but otherwise I think it's definitely not an easy problem. So you're given an integer num rows and you want to return the first num rows of Pascal's Triangle. In Pascal's Triangle, each number is a sum of the two numbers directly above it as shown. And so for this example, five, you want to give this. So essentially, if you look for a number like four, it is the sum of one and three, and six is the sum of three and three, and so on. So every middle number is the sum of the two above it. And then every number on this diagonal is a one, and every number on this diagonal is a one. So how do we do this? And there is a recursive solution that you could do. So you could just take like a row and a column. Like let's say this is row five or four. And then you have some column like two, three, whatever it is. And you can just recurse and that would be totally fine. And then your base case would be this one. Or if your row or if your column was like over here, or over here, but we're not going to really go into that. We're going to go into building this up from the beginning. And I think that's going to be the one we're going to focus on. So because this is an easy problem, I'm going to just talk about how to build this up kind of naturally, pretty intuitively. And we're going to talk about the time and space for that solution. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. We are going to build row by row. So we our default solution, notice there can only be, there has to be one row at least. So our default will just be this first row with a one. And then essentially for every row after that, so let's say we're building the second row. We're going to start every row with a one. And then we're going to check for every number in the above row. We're going to check. Is it the last number? And if it's not, let's add that and the next number after it. Because as you can see, like here, these two ones, there's nothing there. There's nothing else. So this would just have a one and one. But here you can see like to build everything in the middle is just the sum of all of these numbers and the one after it. So like two is one and one. And if you go down here, we do one plus two. And then we do two plus one, and then here it's one plus three, three plus three, three plus one. So this middle section is just the sum of the current number we're on and the number after it. And we want to make sure that we don't do this last number because there is no number after that. But that's pretty much that. So let's go through how to build this whole thing up. So essentially, like I said, for each row, we're going to say, let's add a one. Then for the last row in here, let's just for every number and the number after it, add it and add it in here. So we're just going to loop through this like last row that we're in here. So in this case, there is no number after this number. So we're not going to add anything else, but we're going to add a one because there's nothing else in here. Then we're going to add a one at the very end. So now our result looks like this. We have a one and then our second row is one, one. Yeah, I'm just going to keep this open. So then we're going to build up the third row. So once again, we add a one to start and then we loop through our last row. And then for every number, we add that number and the number after it, but there has to be a number after it, right? So we're not going to like go with this number because there's nothing after it. So we're going to say there, for this number, let's add that and the number after it. So one plus one. So we're going to have two. And then, like I said, for this, there is no number after it. So that's it. And then we add the one in the end. And then we take this and we can actually just copy it and put it in here. And this is the third row. So now for the fourth row, literally same thing. We have a one. Then we loop through this last thing that's in here and we add every number and after number after it. So we would start here. We'd say, okay, one, we're on one, one plus two is three. And then now we're here. Two plus one is three. And for this number, we would be out of bounds. So we don't need to do that. Then we add a one. And that's that row. So you see like, this is like really straightforward. So it's not memoization. It's going to be just like a bottom up DP kind of thing. But this is going to be super time and space efficient because we are not recursing all the way down. So the worst possible solution would be like for this number recurse all the way down and then for this number recurse all the way down and so on because you're doing a ton of repeated work. Here we're not doing any repeated work whatsoever. We're just building up the current row from the row right before. We're not recursing all the way down ever. Okay, so for the last row finally, same thing. So let's add a one. Then we need to loop through our last row here. So one plus three. 4, 3 plus 3, 6, and 3 plus 1, 4. And then once again, this one, there's nothing after it, so we don't go with that. So we add the one after it. And that's basically our result. So this is row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. And that is our result. And as you can see when we return it, that is exactly what we want. 
So that's pretty much going to be how to do this problem. You literally just, for every row after the first row, you have an initial first row. And then for every row after, you literally just loop through the row before and you add every number to the number after if it exists or skip it. And also at every, every new row starts with a one and ends with a one. So you put in a one, then you loop through the row that we had, and then you put in a one at the end. Pretty straightforward. So now we can code it up and then we can talk about time and space and all that. So we're going to say result equals, we are just going to default it to a one. And then this part is kind of like in the real world, it doesn't really matter. But if you think that, you know, if you're talking about space complexity and you think the result doesn't count as part of the, your space, then you actually want to just append you, you never want to do anything outside of the result. We can just do everything in the result. So that's what we're going to do for our solution here. But in the real world, if you do count the result for space, then it doesn't really matter. And I'll talk about that when we go over that. So we can just say for i in range row one to the rest of the rows, we are going to res append. So we're just going to append this one. But like I said, you can totally make this like a new array, do all the work and then append it in the end. But I'm just going to append it like this because I'm going to say for the sake of the solution that since we're doing everything in the result, we don't need to count that as space. Okay, so we're going to say this, then we are going to loop through the, now it's going to be the second to last row because we just added this row, right? Where you could totally make a new array and then you would loop through the last row, which would be totally fine. So for J in range, zero, and then it's going to be length, result, second to last row because we just added this new one. Uh, minus one, right? We don't want to go to the last element where we go to want to do everything else. Then we say res minus one because essentially, so what we basically did is we have our result array and we're just putting in our new row in the result right away where, like I said, you could do that out. You could do that another way. So this res minus one is the new row we're currently working on and res minus two is actually like the last row before this current row we're working on. So res minus one append, and then this is going to be res minus two j plus res minus two, j plus one, right? The element and the element after it. So, and yeah, this can definitely be cleaned up a lot if you make a new array and then just append at the end. Uh, let me just make sure this is actually fine. I don't think it is, I think it's like this. Yeah. Okay, so we're essentially appending all of that. And then finally, we need to add the one at the very end again, right? So, and we need to, as last row here. There's minus one dot append one. And there we go. And now we need to return the result. And there you go. So it is gonna be, I mean, they're all roughly the same, like, and this is not super consistent because they're kind of close. So you can see like, it's all, it just depends. Like they're all pretty close to each other because this is a pretty straightforward problem. But, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about the time and space, and then I will kind of clean it up a little bit. But, so realistically, like I said, the time and space is technically going to be the same in the real world. But, you know, if you say the result is doesn't count, then it wouldn't matter. Okay, so basically for every row, we're going to have to go through the row before. So it's going to be something like... 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 roughly right you might be like one row off but roughly like this is going to be the time because essentially for every row you're going through the row before which will have some number of elements which will, be, which will roughly look like this and the sum conversion of this is n times n minus 1 over 2 and that in big O complexity is n squared right so it's n squared over 2 which is just n squared and the space, that's that's what I was talking about here. So we can technically say that since we did everything in the result, right, everything is in the result, this would be O of one space. But if you were to include the result, then it would also be this like n squared type space because you would essentially have like one element, two elements, three elements, four elements, five elements, and that would add up to roughly n times n plus one over two. Okay. And so let's, we can clean this up, like I said, also to actually not append this one directly. So we can just say something like current equals new array or something, cur append one, and this should still technically work, right? So cur append one, and then this is going to be now the last element, 
So we're going to go through the last element, and then we can do a cur dot append, and then res minus one, res minus one. And then you would do a cur append one at the very end again, and finally res dot append cur. And that also should theoretically work. And it looks a little bit cleaner now. And realistically, it should be around the same space and time. That's why I was saying, like, in the real world, this isn't, like, slower or anything. Yeah, you did allocate a new array, but you're putting it in the result. So it's basically, if you look at the memory of this, it's like 16.3. All these other solutions are roughly 16.3. So it's basically the same thing. But then this would, this would, this you would say, like, well, since my current is outside of the result, now the space would be something like, length of the biggest row, right? Or actually it'd be like something like n, where if you do count the entire result, it'd be n squared. So that's just like a semantics thing that you could talk to your interviewer about. Like my result would be this. If you don't count the result, it's this. And yeah, and yeah, it should be, like I said, around the same as the other solution. So it's just a personal preference. Okay, so I will go back to the other one with the quote unquote oh, one space. But like I said, as you saw, they technically run in basically the same time. Oh, let me just do this. Okay. Okay. So that's going to be it for this problem. So hopefully you liked it. Definitely, uh, yeah, as long as you're not doing some kind of recursion, I think recursion with memoization is also totally fine. Realistically, the space is basically the same. Um, and this is just, this would be quote unquote bottom up DP. So you're building up the row, row by row. It's definitely good practice, and I don't think it's an easy problem compared to, well, you know, a lot of other problems like is palindrome or something. And this is like, if you are practicing memoization and bottom up DP, especially for memoization, this is a great problem to do because it's like a very easy memoization. So it, it'll help you to do the harder problem. So if you want to try that, that's also a good problem to do. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.